Welcome to Apprenticeship Math 12, the hybrid version of the course. Um, I am Mr. Kuchma, your guide along the way. And this is the course intro video just to get you started. Um, and um, I definitely want to meet you on Zoom soon. Um, I recognize some of you may have actually taken the hybrid um, Workplace Math 10 course. If you did, you're very like you're gonna you're gonna do really well in the course. Obviously, you already kind of know how these courses work, but I'm gonna make this course intro video as if you've never done an HCOS hybrid math course. So I'm gonna literally start right here in the content in the course introduction and get you started. So there's a little blurb about myself. Um, I definitely love math and science. Took every math and science course I could take. Um, back when I was in school. Um, I find that uh, this course in particular is a very hands-on, real-world applicable course. Um, so I have actually found that this is many people's favorite math course they ever take. Um, if that ends up being you, let me know. That'd be exciting to hear. Um, but yeah, you know, designing, um, constructing 2D objects, um, plans, um, tools and measurement, um, trig. It's just a it's just a really cool course. Um, to get started, um, you are gonna want to order in the curriculum, um, which I will show you. It looks there's actually two different books, but I've got one of the books here. Here's one of them, MathWorks 12. There's also a MathWorks 11 book. I'm not gonna go into the details um, of why everything changed recently, but. Um, Basically, MathWorks 12 used to be an old course called Apprenticeship Math. Uh, yeah, applications and it uh, doesn't matter. Um, essentially, you're going to be doing a couple chapters from two different books. Okay, so if you took um, Workplace Math 10, the hybrid, you might actually already have the MathWorks 11 book. So I don't exactly know what you're coming into the course with, um, but yeah, hopefully I'll, I'll find that out when I meet with you. Which brings me to the next point. Um, I want to have a Zoom meeting with all of my students when they enter the course. I want to get to know you a little bit. Um, I definitely want to answer any questions that you have. And I also just want to get you started on the right foot. Um, and if you have an IEP, if you have an EA, um, I want to meet with the whole team and get the course, um, yeah, just polished and um, everything's smooth sailing for getting started. This is how to order the curriculum. And I literally have my little disclaimer here that if you took Workplace Math 10, um, you already have the MathWorks 11 book. So you are not gonna need to order this one. You're just gonna need to order the MathWorks 12 book um, that I had shown you. Um, I think I will just show you what it looks like. Um, Apprenticeship Math 12. Uh, the book, I'll sh there's two. This is what the MathWork 11 workbook looks like. I'll zoom out a little bit. So it looks like this. And then the MathWorks 12 booklet looks like. I just showed you the front cover. Um, but it looks like this. So these are the two books um, that we do. And we don't do all of the chapters. Um, I'll showcase that to you in a minute. Um, there are very specific chapters that you are going to complete. And I'll be back over to show you that in a second. So. Um, how can you get this content? The very first way is that you can actually just lend this right from our learning commons for free. So if you're looking to do this course, um, you get it for eight months. I think you can renew it and get it for even longer, like 10 or 12, but you cannot write in the book. You are essentially borrowing it from the library, just like any library book that you've ever you know, taken out. And um, you're gonna need to return it the same way you found it. So you would need to just buy like a notebook or something where you're gonna write all of your math homework in. Um, students have done this, it's worked great. Um, if you're okay with that, then literally, you don't have to spend a single dollar. Um, this course is gonna be great. You just have to um, follow the links to actually go and search for it. The second option is that if you have funding, um, in NCOM, this would be more for parents. So your parents might, uh, if, you, if your parents log into NCOM, they can click a button called additional resources and then they can see how much um, funding is available for the whole family. 
And if there is funding, then you can use funds to buy the books. So you're still not paying anything. Um, you're using curriculum funds that we have. And there's two books. They're both, they both cost $20, uh, $20, but with taxes, it comes to $52.50. Um, so all the information is here. Um, you can follow this link to um, fill it out, which I will click on. And so this is the special order form and you would fill out all the information. And then once you get to the part where it says how many items you'd be ordering, the vendor name and all this kind of stuff, um, you can fill in all of this information. And the amount of your current family budget, that's gonna be um, your parents are gonna have to log into NCOM and find that number. Um, okay, so that is the gist of um, using curriculum funds and um, through lending. The third thing is if you just want to have these books, if you're going to maybe <clears throat> you're the oldest kid and maybe there's other kids that might be using the books later, you can literally go directly to the website and you can actually just um, go and buy the workbooks itself. So I'm not sure if you um, need one book or if you need two books, it depends. Um, they both cost 20 bucks. So there's the MathWorks 11 and there's the MathWorks 12. Again, we can talk about that in the uh, meeting, but I just wanted to showcase that there are three different ways you can get these. I mean, technically, I guess there's more ways. You could just go on Amazon and you can buy them, or you could try to find a PDF online and just uh, work online. Um, that will be up to you. So um, there is also a formula sheet that you are allowed to print off and have access to at all times. Um, this is great resource. Um, there's lots of different um, things regarding tolerance, um, all the finance calculations, scale, uh, surface area and volume formulas, um, Pythagoras, and then conversions. So definitely some really helpful um, stuff there. And then we actually, <laughs> um, for whatever reason, um, in the back of the workbooks, in both the MathWorks 11 and the MathWorks 12, there is no answer key. Instead, the answer key is a separate document so I have it here on the course page. You can feel free to download this. Uh, it just shows you the answers to all the different questions that you're gonna go through. Yes, there are mistakes. This is not perfect by any means, um, but for the most part, um, it's good. And if you ever have a discrepancy, you can always come and see me over Zoom. Um, I'd be happy to help. Um, it does happen um, from time to time. So that's that. Now let's take a look at the course outline. So Apprenticeship Math 12 uh, is completed in five chapters. So hopefully that's exciting for you. If I scroll down a little bit past this, you'll see um, there's chap two chapters in MathWorks 12, then there's three chapters in MathWorks 11. There's also a couple activities. There's an inquiry project, um, there's a campground project, um, and a personal interview and personal survey. I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but the main um, content in the course is laid out in these five chapters. So um, you need both books. You do chapters three, four, five in MathWorks 11 and chapters two and eight in MathWorks 12. Um, like I said, if you've done a course before with us, you're probably already know how this works. But if you haven't, um, each book includes build your skill questions followed by practice your new skill questions, and then at the very end of a unit is a chapter test. Um, the build your skill and the chapter tests in the book are both just there to help you learn, not worth any marks. The practice your new skill questions are worth marks. These are kind of like your assignments. Um, this is where um, you show me that you understand the concepts that have been covered so far. Um, and I'll walk you through that in a minute. So the build your skill questions, um, because they're not for marks, you can literally do those anyway. You can have friends help, you can have your parents, you can look at the answer key, you can do whatever you'd like. Um, I'm not strict on that at all. But when you are completing the practice your new skill questions, um, you can still look at the workbook um, and you can still have your formula sheet and your scientific calculator, but I don't want you looking at the answer key and I do not want you getting help from other people. This is kind of to test how much you actually um, understand from the concepts you were working on. 
And if you are really struggling, I want to know so that we can try to look at getting you some help. So I'm going to jump to chapter 2. Let's go to page 77 here because uh, that's where chapter 2 is. Ah, nope, not 777. Let's go to chapter 77. All right. Um, limits to measurement. So uh, basically you'll get to a spot. There's 2.1. Um, I'm going to quickly show you what it uh, no, I'll go back. But I'll zoom out a little bit. Uh, you go through, there's examples that show you different concepts, and there's these build your skill questions. And these, like I said, are not for marks. They're just to see um, how well you know the content that you've been covering so far. Um, so that's what you um, can begin with. And from there, we'll scroll down. There's more build your skill questions. There's more build your skill questions. There's examples, and so on and so forth. And then once you get to the end, there is the practice your new skill questions. So this is where I want you to now try this on your own. And so there's question one, two, three, um, four, five, six, seven, and then you go on from there. Um, what you will do to mark these, I'll show this to you in a second. I'm just going to go to tolerances. I'm going to show you the same thing for 2.2. Build your skill questions more build your skill questions. Uh, I'm just going to scroll to the end to show you the practice your new skill questions again. So here's the practice your new skill questions. And I believe there's only, yeah, there's only 2.1 and 2.2. Um, so now if you take a look, um, what you will see is that 2.2 ends and now there's a chapter test. So this is also for practice. This is, uh, I'm not going to give you marks for the chapter test you are instead going to do work in my course. So let me let me go back to step three and step four. So it says, record your score from the practice new skills. So um, the practice new skill questions are for marks, um, but they're just like kind of like completion. Like I'm just going to get you to mark them yourself, um, or you can have like a parent or a sibling mark them. Um, I'm not going to mark them. You can just uh, do that on your own. And then, um, you study and you prepare for the chapter challenge. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So you don't do the chapter test here. That's for practice. Instead, you're going to do the one that I created. And I called it a chapter challenge instead. Um, so just different wording. So let me show you what that actually looks like in a chapter. I'm going to skip over here. Um, so when you are working through chapter two, this is what you'll be filling out. These are the practice and new skill scores. So there's a score for 2.1 and a score for 2.2, and you can download this. And maybe you got 10 out of 10. That's awesome. Maybe you got 7 out of 10. That's still great. Um, if you get 3 out of 10, um, please still mark that. I want to know that there's something that you're struggling with, and then maybe we can have a conversation about that and do some extra work. Um, these practice new skills are not a huge part of your mark. Um, they're a small part, but I still wanted them to be here. Um, just to encourage um, the usage of all the all the build your skill questions and practice new skill questions. So once you're done, you submit it into the hand inbox. Um, following this, there is a chapter challenge. Now you cannot just jump here, um, but this is where you actually get graded, um, and this is worth a large portion of your marks. Um, it says visible if conditions are met. So students are not able to come and do this until you've submitted your limits to measurement practice or new skill questions, which hopefully makes sense. I don't want you to go and do this until you've actually completed the chapter. Um, otherwise, that might not go so well. So um, once you've done this, then you can submit it. And that's how each chapter works is that you do the build your skills. Um, you finish with the practice and new skills. You mark those and you let me know how you did. Um, I hope that's pretty um, pretty straightforward. Um, in addition, um, if you are kind of new to HCOS or to online learning, you might want some help with PDFs. Um, so I've got some um, help here with um, different things, how to use cam scanner, compressing PDFs, and um, stuff like that. So you can take a look here um, if there's anything helpful. I want to tell you that there's also a project. Uh, there's a couple projects. These are a lot more straightforward. You literally just grab either the PDF that you print off 
um, and you'll be ended, ending up scanning it in. Or um, you can instead choose to um, work the document and work online. But they're both the exact same thing. You complete the campground project and you hand it into the hand-in box. Um, similarly, the personal interview and personal survey. Um, there's a, a part of this course that specifically wants you to look into um, a future career. And I think that's great um, for a math course. It gets you to um, interview people in a job that um, you could potentially see yourself doing. And it also gets you to survey um, people who are um, just in the community and find out how um, math is involved in their everyday life. And definitely the goal um, is that you can see that you know everything that you learn in this course is helpful. There's an inquiry project I'm not going to get too much into at the end, and then there's a final. Um, so the final I want to quickly just um, cover quickly, um, but it'll be supervised at home. Um, I email the final exam to whoever's supporting you in the course. And then it is going to be comprised of five parts, which are the five units that you did in the course. So I hope that's very like easy. Um, it literally follows um, the exact chapters that you did. So the very first one that you have to do is on measurement. The second one is on owning a business and so on and so forth. So there's five units. There'll be some short answer, long answer, and you know even some graphing uh, and drawing questions which these are going to be very, very similar to the chapter challenges that you're completing. So you'll be well equipped to do well um, on this because it's literally exactly what you've been doing the whole course. So that is basically it. I hope that you have a great time in this course. Um, I look forward to meeting you and I really hope that this was helpful. Thanks for watching and take care.